Hi everyone and greetings from a very sunny and warm Maine today. My name is Erica. I am one of the librarians at Jenks and I was supposed to visit your class in person, um, your COM 356 class um, this past week, but instead we're going to do this online. So I'm actually coming to you from one of my offices right now. Um, behind me is my extensive DVD collection. So I thought what better room to do this in than in a place that houses one of my favorite medias. And some of you actually might be choosing to focus on films or videos or something like that for your particular project. Um, so today this introduction video um, is meant to just give you some context about how I'm going to set you up and how I want you to start to think about research for your particular topic. And then you'll primarily use the course guide that I've shared with you all, and hopefully your professor has sent you a link to that, um, to connect with some other information. Uh, you'll watch a few more videos if they're helpful for you, um, but really it's kind of a self-paced through this research process. But this introduction is meant to help you think about the ways in which I usually guide students through um, research for this particular uh, paper that you guys are going to be writing. So one of the things that I want to say right off the bat is that there isn't necessarily one database that fits all for the type of research that you guys are doing. And that's because of the nature of the topics that you're exploring in this particular class and the large questions that you're asking about the artifacts that you're now analyzing. Some of you are looking at films, others of you might be studying music, some some of you might be looking at historical documents or speeches. These are very different topics and will require a different approach to research. So my hope and my goal um, through the course guide and through some of these videos is to show you the steps that you can transfer no matter what topic you're looking at and the ways in which I start to try to get students to think a little bit differently about how we might approach research for this particular assignment. So uh, this is exciting um, because there's a lot of flexibility with the types of information that you could be potentially looking at and hopefully I'll help you narrow it down a little bit. So the first thing that I want to say as an introduction for the, our research approach for this class uh, is there are several um, different ways in which you'll need to work through and explore um, resources as you work on analyzing that artifact of yours. And I think of research in this class as really fitting into four main categories. Um, the first category is, of course, the artifact itself. What are you actually analyzing? What's your media? Uh, that's easy and you have probably already done that. Um, but some of you, this might look a little bit different. You might have one source for this. Maybe it's one TV show or a couple of episodes of a TV show. Others of you might be looking at uh, an entire newspaper or something like that and looking at multiple runs of that. Um, so artifact is number one. Uh, the second category of research is research about um, your chosen methodology of criticism. Um, so what actual lens, criti critical lens, are you applying to that artifact? Most of the time this comes from the textbooks that you have been assigned for this class, um, but there are um, other resources that we might find within the library, and you can look at the uh, NOVA catalog tab for that information on your course guide. And then the third uh, category of research is research about uh, the artifact itself and what maybe other scholars have been saying about that artifact. So other media critics potentially have been talking about. And we can turn to our library databases for that. Uh, for some of you, this is going to be harder than others, depending on the topic that you're looking at. So I'll give you some strategies for thinking about that. And then lastly, it is uh, research about your big picture question. And this, for me, is one of the most important aspects of this research that you're entering into and conducting. And this is what I tell almost every student who comes to me asking for help in this particular class. Never forget the big question that you're asking and what your artifact is helping to answer about that big question. Um, this is going to be your best friend when you turn to the library databases for searching because most of you are probably not going to be able to plug in the name of your artifact or something like that and find information about it. Some of these are just too specific for uh, searching within our databases. But you will be able to find information about your big question that you're asking and maybe the genre or type of media to which your artifact falls. And we'll see an example of that in just a moment. So that's that's the direction, that's the lens that we are going to take as we move through some of our resources. So I've gone back and forth a lot with the best way that I think to help you guys 
um, set you up for some of this information. And I decided that the best way is to actually think about um, some different examples from students who have come to ask me for help in the past and we've been successful in finding research. So think of this as a case study, if you will, as we explore some of these. And I'm going to use them as examples in other videos and throughout your course guide. So I want to set up those case studies that we are going to be taking a look at. Um, so these are real life examples from this class that I've helped with in the past. Um, so student number one who came to me a few years ago, the artifact that she was exploring was the TV show Shameless and she was looking at a few different episodes within that TV show. And the big picture question that she ultimately decided on was how does mainstream culture portray sexuality? Um, so it took us a little bit. Um, we could not plug in Shameless into the databases. Instead, we needed to go to that big picture question. So what I try to get her to think about is instead of focusing in specifically on the TV show Shameless, instead, what kind of a TV show is Shameless? Well, it's obviously TV. Uh, it's episodic. Uh, and it's a comedy. So instead, when we go to our databases to actually find critical research about this, we're actually going to use that, that big bigger genre to which the TV show Shameless falls into, uh, TV comedies, uh, and sexuality. Those are the two keywords that we use within our databases to go ahead and search. So that's one example, uh, and we were successful in finding research uh, in that area. Student number two, who came to me last year for help, um, she actually wanted to, to do um, a research study about Donald Trump's inauguration address. And so her problem was a little bit different because uh, it was very, very soon after the inauguration address had actually happened. She knew that there wasn't going to be that much research about uh, Trump's inauguration address specifically. So instead, we had to get creative. She ended up asking questions about rhetoric in times of division uh, and how that often is comes out in presidential speeches. Um, so that's that was a pretty interesting question. So how I advised her was to think broadly about the rhetorical strategies used in presidential speeches, not just President Trump's speech, but presidential speeches in general. And then her job was to apply that back to Trump's speech. Um, so how did this translate for actual database searching? Um, we used... Uh, keywords such as rhetorical strategy and division and president uh, so that we could actually find some critical analysis of these kinds of things. And it's that student two example that we're actually going to carry with us throughout a couple of these videos that you guys are going to be searching. So as a kind of a step one uh, in your research, I would encourage you to actually identify your, ob your artifact, which you should have already done, identify your big research question, your big topic that you're working with, and then start to make a list of yourself about all of the different subgroups or subcategories that your question falls into, such as what genre or type of media does my object, my artifact fall into, um, what other types of scholars or disciplines might be researching my topic. Um, do I need to look at what historians are saying or do I need to look at what um, maybe even like psychologists are saying about my topic and start to jot that down so that you have a better idea of what direction you actually need to take for your research. All right, so with all that kind of preamble in mind about the ways in which we can start to think about our topic, um, we are going to jump in next to um, some specific ways of searching our library databases and some best tools to, best databases to use for searching for information in uh, this, uh, for this project that you guys are gonna be using. So follow me um, throughout your course guide, and then don't forget, I'm always just an email away, erica.street.gordon.edu, and I'd be happy to help you out. Thanks everyone.